Welcome to The Razor's Edge. Today we're talking with Nick Parker, legendary drummer of bands like Cradle of Filth, Lock Up, Brugera and a hell of a lot more. Nick's new project, Borstal, takes inspiration from the New York hardcore scene. We talk about this project, his career and a lot more. So welcome to the Razor's Edge. Cheers, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Cheers. So, um, first off, to get it out of the way, how's the last year in lockdown been for you? Uh, it's been a blessing and a curse um, in many respects. Um, you know, uh, obviously, I'm a tour professional, full-time touring musician. So just to have my entire livelihood ripped from under my feet, you know, with no, no help from the government, they don't, they don't recognise um, self-employed musicians as being legitimate self-employed workers. Yeah. Um, the government's publicly said that um, the music industry isn't a viable industry despite generating 5.2 million a year for the government yeah. and that we should all retrain. Well, that's easy for Boris to say, but when you're pushing 50 years old and you've done this your entire life, you know, with very limited transferable skills, who the fuck's going to employ me? You know, you know what I'm saying. I know. What you know, saying. I mean, you know, I got job stoppers for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get, I get you. I get you. Um, but yeah, it's it, it, there's that element of it, um, but also it's it's given me time to reflect as well, like um, on just how much I took my job for granted. You know, travel in the world and like touring, and you know, it's like you know, I really miss it now, and you know. Yeah, I think I'll appreciate it a lot more when we get back. Also, the last thing uh, before we carry on is um, the lockdown was it enabled me to, uh, you know, do Borsal, which we're here to talk about today. Absolutely. So, yeah. 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 So, so on to Borstal. So you're probably best known for your time on the drum stool at Cradle Filth, Demu, Brugera, Lockup, etc., etc., etc. So, so yeah. tell us a little about Borstal. What is this project all about? Right. Well, um. It's basically a New York hardcore project that I wanted to. I've been wanting to do for quite a lot of years um, because I've always loved this music. I mean, I love all music. Good music is good music, regardless of the genres. But you know, the punk and the hardcore thing stuck with me from being a teenager in the mid '80s because all of the thrash bands that I loved, and you'll contest this as well. And um, you know, they were all mad punk and hardcore freaks yeah you know i mean i had pictures of metal posters of metallica on my wall wearing gbh and discharge shirts you know and everybody discovered the misfits through metallica it's yeah. a it's a given yeah. you know i mean you know the artwork and everything pusshead's artwork you know it's in his band septic death you know it's everything's kind of connected you know i like the artwork who's that pusshead oh he's got a band called septic death oh let's check them out yeah you know and stuff like that and i've always been a fan I've always been musical, obviously being, you know, a musician and being a drummer. But um, yeah, I've always loved this type of music, but it's only now that I've been able to find the right people to do it with. Yeah. So, so talking about the right people, how, how did you get the, the five of you together? Right. Well, um, like I said, I've been wanting to do this for quite a long time and I've approached different people over the years, but, you know, nothing comes to fruition uh, you know, there's an old musician thing, like when we all get together and get fucked up, you know, there's always someone say, hey, we should do a band, you know, but very rarely does anything happen. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of gave up on it for a bit and then just out, just in a matter of fact, passing way, I just happened to mention it to Lee and Wes one day um, from Dripback, you know, fucking, there's no one around who, want, who wants to do this band with me and they jumped on it. They really, fucking hell, well, why did you ask us first? <laughs> so, you know, it's like, really? Are you sure? Are you serious? It's like, yeah, it's like, you know, no fucking about. You know, if you're in, you're in for the long haul. And that's it. Great. They were totally on it. And it was quite overwhelming, to be honest, because, uh, you know, there's so many, like, people, you know, they're all talking, no fucking trousers. Yeah. You know, yeah, 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 sure, we'll do it. Let's do lunch sometime. Sorry about that. Excuse me. <laughs> um, And then... Um, so they jumped on it and within a week they were sending me riffs and structures and what do you think to this? Is this the right thing? Is, are we in the right ballpark? And 
I loved it straight away. We'd seen we were on the same page and everything, and we wanted the same goals. And so it, it was really easy. I mean, within a couple of rehearsals, we had like, you know, five songs, six songs down, you know, yeah. and um, then they suggested Pierre from Knuckle Dust, who I didn't know at all. And then, um, you know, I did Knuckle Dust, obviously, but I didn't know him personally. And um, it's like, great, if you think he's the guy, then let's roll with it. And the moment I met Pierre, you know, we just straight away, it was like long lost brothers, you know, we just clicked. Um, which is a bit of a rarity for me and singers. <laughs> but no, he's a great guy and um, he, he loved what we were doing and um, everything just seemed to fall into place really quickly. It's quite surprising, actually, how natural everything went, you know. Yeah. And then finally, we got, we got Jamie from King of Pigs on second guitar. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, everything works out great. Yeah, so, so the band name, the EP, there's a theme running through it. So what's yeah. the story behind that? Well, you know, um, even though it's kind of like leaning towards New York hardcore, uh, we still wanted to have like a British identity. And um, Lee's dad is also um, Arthur Kitchener from, yeah. you know, The Last Resort. So, you know, we wanted we wanted to we wanted to kind of pay homage to like all the bands we love, like the, the East Coast scene, even some of the West Coast, you know, Terror and stuff like that. Um, but also with like a Brit twist. So, um, yeah, and then, you know, okay, something, what, 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 we need a name, something catchy, but something that represents like a British institution, you know? And it's like, Borstal, yeah. it's perfect. You know, it's nasty. It's like, you know, everyone's seen scum at once in their life. Yeah, I was going to ask, know, and, is it from, is it anything to do well, with... It, 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 it's one of our favourite movies, Yeah, you know, and we, we quote it all the time. You know, in the group chat, you know, we're, we're always quoting it, and, you know, just being kids. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so, you know, Borstal stuck. And then with the whole idea of, uh, you know, like, okay, what we're going to call the EP? Well, at a Majesty's Pleasure, because it ties in with, like, you've been detained, you know, you're going to be incarcerated in Borstal at a Majesty's Pleasure. Yeah. So it all kind of links up. You know, same with the, you know, the inner sleeve and stuff. Instead of having side B, side A, we had A wing, B wing. Yeah. You know, and it's just little little touches that make it kind of special. But the Borstal thing is, you know, that's what we're going to elaborate on a bit more as, you know, we go on. I mean, we're writing the album at the moment. So there's going to be more little, you know, Borstal hints here and there. Yeah. You know, as we go on. But yeah, it's, it, we just thought, you know, it fits perfect. You know, anybody that knows what a Borstal was will know that, yeah, it, they were fucking nasty, horrible, vile places where, you know, I wouldn't want to send anyone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, so, so it, it's the uh, the EP, it's such a different style from your usual black metal, death metal bands that you're in. So as a drummer, do you approach Borstal any differently? Uh, not really, no. I mean... Um, it's the same principles, really, you know, you listen to the music and then you kind of figure out, you know, what the music needs and where it needs it, you know, and it's, it's pretty much the same. It's just a different style, yeah. you know, um, yeah, from a musician standpoint, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same. Fair enough. So, so when everything gets back to normal, if it ever does, are you taking the project <laughs> out on the road? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, it's a full-time band. Um you know, we've got plans to do festivals, tours. You know, we're just waiting for, like you say, everything to get back to normal. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and you say it's, you say it's full time band. So, do you see this as a, a very long term project? Then you're writing an album. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, like I said, we're already um, we're already writing the the, the album. Um, the the whole idea behind the band was like, let's get get an EP out first, release it ourselves, and then I'll take the EP and I'll shop it around the labels. Yeah. so we can get an album deal. Yeah. So at the moment, we're in the process of writing the album. We're about eight songs in. Um, but before we do that, we're going to release a seven-inch to bridge the gap. Yeah. Um, we're, we're actually booked in the studio with Russ Russell in July. So we're going to do three new songs on a seven-inch, and that will bridge the gap, you know, between the EP and the um, album being released. 
because I still have to negotiate a record deal for that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was going to say, have you started shopping the EP around now? Then not yet. No, I'm going to wait till it drops, so that you know there's a bit of press and we're on people's radars, and then I'll just slip it, you know, in the mailbox. Yeah. Um. So, so looking back at your career for a minute. Um, you've been in a lot of bands as a permanent me- member, but you also deckize yeah. a lot, filling in for tours and things like that. So do you prefer being the permanent member of the bands or do you prefer filling in as and when? I like both. You know, um, I like I like playing my own bands, obviously, you know, and that's, you know, my security, my stability, my financial stability. Um but, and doing the depth stuff, it's fun. I mean, especially if it's a band that you're a fan of. Yeah. You know, it's it's great. It's funny. I mean, I get to play songs that I've loved, you know, with people that I like. It's it's a perfect world, you know. So yeah, it's it's great. Both both is good. Yeah. That's. Uh, I think the first time I remember you filling in for on the drum stool for someone was back in '93 with my good friend Cancer. So as a fresh faced yeah. twenty year old, how did you land? <laughs> Filling in for Carl, right? Well, um, I met Carl because I used to get, I used to go to all the gigs down at, in in Brum. Yeah. Um, you know, like like the late eighties, early nineties, because yeah. I'm because I'm from Chesterfield. I'm pretty central, you know. So like Brum's only an hour away. Nottingham's only forty minutes away. Sheffield's a stone throw. Leeds is forty minutes. Manchester's an hour. So growing up here in the eighties, I got to see like Metallica and Slayer a bunch of times. Yeah. You know, because they'd all, you know, Manchester one night and then from the next, yada, yada. Um, anyway, so I used to go down to all the gigs at, at Eddie's in Brum. And um, I forget which one. It might have been Obituary and Morgoth and Demolition Hammer. I met Carl. Yeah. I was like, all right, you're, you're Carl Stokes, aren't you, from Cancer? Yeah, you know, big fan. I, lo- I love your album. Uh, we travelled to Wrexham to see you. We travelled to Wrexham Memorial to see him um, play with Benediction and Bolt Thrower yeah. back in... 1990, and I just bought two of the gory end. I was so fucking chuffed. And being a huge gore, gore and horror fan too, you know, the uh, the tribute to the Dawn of the Dead album cover on gory end, I was like, yeah, this this is my type of shit. So, yeah, I, I got to know Carl from going down to Edwards, and we kind of struck up a little bit of a friendship. And then um, he just happened to mention to me, you know, oh, we've got the Deerside tour at the end of the end of the year. Um, would you would you consider coming with us and helping us out? You know, as a drum roadie, stage roadie, and I was seventeen, totally a total rookie, never been on tour before, and I was like, yeah, fuck it, why not? Great, and that was my doorway into well, here we are today. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, I bet I met Glenn Benton when I was seventeen. Uh, he's the one that turned me on to weed, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was I was a total rookie, like, two days into the tour, and Glenn Benton saying, hey, kid, do you want to come and work for Deerside too? So I was like, yeah, fuck it, why not? And that was how I cut my teeth. And then, I, you know, I continued working for Cancer in a crew capacity. Hmm. And then I had my own band, Monolith, which was called Catalepsy, some generic bullshit death metal band back in the early 90s that we missed the first initial explosion, yeah. you know, so... Obviously, black metal was the next stage for me. But, um, yeah, I mean, um, because I was working with Carl when he had his accident and my band Monolith was supposed to be on that tour as well. So he said to me, will you fill in on the drums? It's like, yeah, I knew the songs anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. And then on that tour, I was already tape trading with Cradle of Filth and we ended up playing a couple of shows with them. And then a month later, I was in Cradle of Filth. Yeah. Yeah, and you stayed there for quite a while in the end, didn't you? So yeah, yeah. So, so do you have any regrets from any of the jobs you've taken over the years? Um, no, not really. Yeah, maybe a couple of regrets. I mean, I think agreeing to do Atrocity Leaves Eyes was a bit of a, you know, fail on my part. But you know, again, it comes down to that. I didn't want to be pigeonholed as just being a death metal and black metal drummer. Yeah, you know, so. And at the time, I, I thought, well, <laughs> Nightwish is huge. You know, maybe these are the next Nightwish, you know. Yeah. But it didn't work yeah. out. And just the chemistry, I mean, they're, they're lovely people, but it just wasn't for me, you know. We didn't really, it, yeah, there they was, they was no real, like, connection or anything. I didn't, it wasn't me. Yeah, fair I'd say that's probably, that and 
doing the possessed tour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so my final question for you tonight. Um, you're a busy okay. man, you've got lots going on. What does the rest of 2021 hold in store for Nick Parker? Right, well, we're uh, like I said, we're uh, going to be recording a new seven-inch for Borstal in uh, July with Russ Russell to bridge the gap for the um, the, the album. Um, the Brewery album is being mixed right now, so hopefully that will be out by the end of the year. Yeah, uh, I plan on doing another Twilight of the Gods album with uh, Alan Avril from Primordial yeah. and uh, Runa Rarison, ex, ex Mayhem. And uh, yeah, anybody needs a session drummer, hit me up. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah. That's great. You've got a busy year anyway. So cheers. Yeah, to, yeah. Cheers for talking to us tonight, Any, It's been a pleasure. No time. Anytime, mate. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for listening. Make sure you keep up to date with future episodes by subscribing to our channels. For more information on this podcast, or for all the latest music news, reviews, interviews and more, head over to our website, www.theraceresedge.rocks.